Just kidding. OK, now we're really ready. So just to give you a little overview of what I was working on here. Um, so most of you probably are aware, having taken gross anatomy, that in the lab, the primary instruction you receive is through a dissection guide. So it's really important for that to be clear and easy to understand or use. Um, and right now, the physical therapy program on this campus uses Grant's dissector. You can see a picture there. It's kind of your standard spiral round dissection guide that's been used for 60 years, designed for medical students. So it's great, but of course, there are some limitations with it. I mean, for one, just being a printed spiral guide, it's limited by the amount of information that can be contained in it from you know, physical space. Also, um, you can see just a little image of one of the pages of instruction. It's kind of long narrative text and lots of information that's included in there. It's not necessarily directly related to the instructions. So a lot of times, people find that confusing, especially first-time dissectors. Um, and this is just kind of highlighting a portion of the text you can see how long it is. They added all this information in the red box about the muscle attachments, which you know, is helpful to know, but not necessarily when you're buying directions for cutting, possibly. So anyway, a lot of this can lead to inefficient use of time in the lab, confusion, mistakes, and frustration. So also another limitation is you can't really update or customize, because it's already printed, so you can't you know, change it to the order that fits your program. So with all that in mind, our goal was to create an updated modern digital dissection guide that was specific to the PT program. And we focused on one region, the lower extremity. Um, and I split this into two phases. So the first is data collection, and then the second is going to be actually creating the guide. So I'll go into these phases a little bit more. Um, phase one, it's basically taking qualitative field notes. So during the 10-week summer course, I observed all the students in lab as they were dissecting, took notes about um, you know, questions they had, confusion, mistakes any issues they had with grants. And then there was also a post-course feedback form that they filled out online, so it took information about the lab from there. And then also talked to the faculty and TAs at the end of each lab or during to get their feedback or points of confusion as well. Um, and so just highlight some quotes from the post-course survey, talking about grants being confusing, especially when they had to like you know, reorder, so a lot of times we'd have to change the order, omit steps just to fit the needs of our program. Um, saying that it can be, you know, kind of confusing, convoluted to read, and also it would be nice to have the lab material and course material correspond better, so that's another benefit of having a program-specific guide. So um, based on all the information we gathered in phase one, figure, you know, figured out the areas you wanted to address, and then selected different technologies we'd like to use to build this guide. So just an overview of those. Um, we built the guide in iBooks Author, created some line diagrams in Adobe Illustrator. We edited some photographs that we took of cadavers in Photoshop, created some first-person filmed footage in, with Google Glass, and then edited that in Final Cut Pro, and then also made an interactive learning module with Articulate Storyline. So I'll talk about some of these aspects in a little more detail. Um, so first of all, there's a lot of different platforms you could use to create an EPUB or educational publication. Um, because Apple products are really popular you, in higher education, and especially on this campus, each humidor has an iMac at it. So we have something supported on that platform. And iBooks Author is great for creating educational publications because it's really easy to use and also to navigate as the user. So um, you can see this image on the right. Here's an example of a page from the guide. So it's really you know, like clean, easy, bullet-pointed instructions, and really efficient use of space because you can do all these cool things like an embedded glossary. So instead of adding all the muscular attachments right there in the directions, bolded terms have like a little scroll over glossary that pops up. So it looks kind of similar to this, a little bit different. I made it bigger so you can see it, but you know, talking about that muscle, it's attachments, actions, so everything relevant to that course. So you can look at that anytime, use it for studying later. You can add hyperlinks to different websites or videos. Um, you can also add image galleries. So on that top left there you, um, is an image gallery. So you can scroll through and see a bunch of different images. So different views are from different sources. So kind of an example there. Have anterior compartments, see the muscles. You can see the attachments on the bones, the neurovasculature, so they can scroll through and see all that. So that's really cool. Also, you can add these formative quizzes. So that's kind of an example there. There's a bunch of different questions that you can scroll through and track their progress or use it to um, study for right before the exam. You can add multimedia components like video clips, interactive learning modules, 
so forth. And with all these aspects, you can better engage multiple learning styles, so like your visual, auditory, kinesthetic, what have you. Um, and then talk a little bit more about other components we added to the guide. So we took some, created some line drawings with Adobe Illustrator, adapted them from grants or other sources to fit the needs of our curriculum. So here on the left, you can see an image from grants. It's all the cutaneous innervation and um, cutaneous veins. And you can see it's a pretty busy diagram, a lot going on, and it can be kind of hard to follow. Plus, there are structures on there that are not relevant to the PTs. So I adapted that for the anterior thigh compartment lab and just focused on the <coughs> excuse me, cutaneous nerves that they needed to look at. And then you can see the distribution. So kind of took that base um, image, drew, and created our own diagram. So that's one example. Then we used Google Glass, which you can see depicted here, to create some first-person perspective video clips. So here's just a screenshot of one for lab techniques. So that, it's a little hard to tell what that is, but that's a cadaver in prone position. So I'm showing skinning techniques for the back. So for first-time dissectors to kind of see how to remove the skin. Um, so there's a bit of a learning curve with using Google Glass. The you know, camera's up here, so you have to crank your head in a weird direction to get it to work right. But So it takes a little bit to get used to, but it works pretty well. So then we edited these video clips in Final Cut Pro, which is a really fun program to use. You import the stuff, you edit it, you can add any transitions you want, and then um, a soundtrack if you want, and then export it and import it into iBooks. So here's an example of a video clip technique. Let's zoom. I thought the music was funny. <laughs> you can feel free to dance if you want. So, okay, maybe not the best footage in the world, but I'm new. Okay, so also um, created an interactive learning module. So for this, we did bony anatomy of that region. That's something that's, there's just not enough time to cover that in lecture, but it is tested and it's important to know. So they're kind of left on their own to figure that out. But so we created this um, interactive learning module. So you can see on the left here, we're building an articulate storyline, adding all the layers for hover over and all these cool features you can use. And then that's an image of it being used. So we're hovering over one feature, it's highlighted, shows the name, the attachments, all that cool stuff. So they get to play with that as much as they want to, which will be a lot because it's so much fun. Okay. So final product, we have our guide shown here on the iMac and also on an iPad. So really easy to access, portable. We're hoping that'll encourage students to read more before the lab and also use this more often as a study material before their lab practical. Um, so we did a preliminary usage study. All the PT students from last year had a brief demo of this on their Facebook page, and we asked them to review it. 11 people said they would, so they were given access to the guide in an online survey with a five-point Likert scale, and three of them filled it out, but so far the results are good. Um, they thought it was well organized, they liked the video clips, and the illustrations were clear. The correlates, that's something I didn't have a lot of time to build into, but I would like to in the future. Um, the quizzes were good, glossary terms helpful, and better um, format than grants. So, boom, awesome. Um, next phase, we want to test this with the students this summer, 2016. So we're going to give the portions of the guide that we created to half the students, like four out of five, four out of nine tables. Um, then they'll get like an extensive usage survey and to compare it to grants and also what they think of it, and then also compare their performance on cadaver exams against the other group to the relevant questions to see if there's any improvement in learning outcomes. So some other things I thought of we could add would be some more anatomical variation, which is usually not a lot of room for that in dissection guides, um, more specific clinical correlates and tie into other program or classes that they're taking at the time. Um, could do video clips to like at the end of each lab to review all the structures you're supposed to find or for difficult, you know, steps that you have to do. 
or create modules for difficult concepts like the adductor canal, which can be really hard for people to get their head around. So there's a lot of opportunity to add cool things here. Um, but that will conclude my talk. So I just wanted to, again, thank everyone that helped make this project happen, like the donors and their families, this Colorado State Anatomical Board, NOAA and CU Online and the MSMIG program and the PT class of 2017 because they were awesome to work with. And then now I'd like to take any questions if